Hey guys, if you add hydrogen hydrate to iodine trichloride, a violent reaction with iodine vapors rushing up will occur. But what happens if we rerun this reaction in a glass box filled with very heavy sulfur hexafluoride, which is the same gas that makes your voice deeper? So I placed a flask with iodine trichloride in a glass box, and I am filling it with the heavy gas. Now I am pouring hydrogen hydrate into the flask to find out whether iodine vapors can penetrate through the sulfur hexafluoride atmosphere. Here I perform the same experiment, only this time I initiated the reaction before I placed the flask in the glass box. The density of iodine vapors is approximately equal to the density of sulfur hexafluoride. That's why instead of settling down at the bottom of the glass box, iodine vapors cover the ladder forming a real iodine cloud. And diffusion is the only reason the glass box is eventually filled to iodine vapors. Also, I decided to include the reaction of hydrogen and hydros with iodine trichloride in this video to let you know that soon I'm going to upload a separate video about hydrogen and hydros. So make sure you don't miss it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. And if you'd like to support me even more, you may consider joining my Patreon page by following the link in the description and become one of the patrons whose generosity helps me so much in creating unique chemical content. One reaction with water, titanium tetrachloride, produces a great amount of white smoke. So by adding water drop by drop into titanium tetrachloride in the sulfur hexafluoride atmosphere, I try to achieve something that looks like an ordinary white cloud. This peculiar reaction between iron pentacarbonyl and terbutyl hydroperoxide carries out with the formation of a mushroom cloud that burns down afterwards, turning into ferric oxide, or in other words, rust. This is how the reaction carries out under standard conditions. Atmospheric oxygen sets on fire both the reaction, products and iron pentacarbonyl vapors, creating what I can safely say is the most beautiful rust formation you've ever seen. Well, let's see what happens if we run this reaction in the sulfur hexafluoride atmosphere.
due to the absence of oxygen, a mushroom cloud does not combust, and unoxidized reaction products keep floating in the glass box. However, if we replace sulfur hexafluoride with oxygen and rerun the reaction, iron pentacarbonyl vapors and other reaction products will burn down so fast, they don't have time to form a mushroom cloud. It can be seen much more clearly in slow-mo. Since this video is mainly about sulfur hexafluoride, I included its reaction with lithium here as well. The thing is, sulfur hexafluoride is quite a stable reagent. In order to make it engage in a reaction, we need a really high temperature, the fire point of metal, for example. I used lithium in this experiment because it looks more visual and attractive in my opinion. Besides, it's a very well-known reaction, the components of which are used as a propellant in some types of torpedoes. This reaction starts at a fire point of lithium and carries out away the formation of lithium sulfide and lithium fluoride. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, like and comment, stay tuned, see you in the next video.